Hello everyone! Welcome back to the farm. It's another beautiful day here in East Hawaii. It's, uh, what is it? Mid-September. And today I'd love to tell you about the plants that we grow that are hibiscus. They're in the mallow or malvaceae family. And there are a number of them that are edible. So I'm just here to say hello. And now onto the plants. Let me show you what we grow. I think you're going to really like them. All right. Wow, look at this beauty. Do you know what this one is? Some of you Hawaii folks probably know. This is the plant called hau, H-A-U. You might also see it called sea hibiscus. It is hibiscus tiliaceus. And it has this beautiful yellow flower. It lasts just about one day. And then they'll kind of turn gradually pinky orange by the end of the day. The leaves are shaped like flowers. Or sorry, <laughs> the leaves are shaped like hearts. Hearts. This one is really just a bush. It's a couple years old. But they do become as big as trees. They were brought by the uh, ancient Hawaiians. It's a canoe plant. Uh, and they were, they, Hawaiians use them for many purposes. They use the wood for building, cordage, and other plant, many of the plant parts are used for medicinal purposes. So pretty. That's the first hibiscus we have to show you. Walk with me while I show you. Here's how it is today. Beautiful sunny day. If anything, we could use a little more rain. Everybody's thirsty. All right. This is the second type of hibiscus that we grow. This is called Bele, B-E-L-E. -E. Otherwise, you might have heard of it also as Tongan spinach. Uh, it's Abulmoscus manihot is the Latin name. Apparently, it used to be in hibiscus, and they, they moved it out. But it's still in Malvaceae, which is the, the mallow family. So this plant we really, really love. The main reason why is because you can propagate it just by taking some of the woody stem, take a cutting of the woody stem, stick it in the ground, and it'll come back. It won't come back from, you know, one of these green bits, but it will come back from the stem. It seems to do really well in full sunlight or partial shade. It doesn't care how many dry days we have. It doesn't care how many wet days we have. It's just happy and does its thing. This one is maybe like four feet tall already. You can uh, eat the leaves. They, you can pretty much use them just like spinach. Uh, they are what is called mucilaginous, which just means that they get a little bit slimy. So. Just something to consider when you're cooking them. I We cook with the leaves and the stem. Just chop the stem up real thin uh, into little pieces and cook it with everything else. Just use it like spinach. Who's this? Oh, it's a tiny lizard. Anyway, Bailey I love, and if you grow, if you if you grow it and live in the Pacific, I think you would really love this plant because it's very, very hardy. It doesn't uh get overtaken by weeds. Look at this weedy area here. It just manages to do its own thing and sort of hold its own regardless of the conditions. And the soil that this is in is like really not great soil, but they don't care. They're totally happy. Uh, we harvest the leaves as they sort of start to get yellow, uh, but you can, you know, you can do it however you want. Uh, what else did I want to say about this plant? It does produce flowers. They look like hibiscus flowers. They're pale yellow, very, very pretty. They don't produce flowers very often, but we have seen them. We don't have any that are flowering right now, otherwise I would show them to you. Um, oh, the other thing is that I was looking on the Big Island Invasive Species Council, and they recommend this as a pono plant. This plant has apparently been in Hawaii since the 1800s, and it's never been found to be sort of outside of where it was planted. It really sticks to its area, so you don't have to worry about getting invasive and out of control. Bailey, love this plant. Let's move on. Do, 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 do. 
too. Look at all these beans. Beans. This is probably one of our gardens. Cashew tree. So ready to enjoy some cashews one day. One day. This tree is what, like maybe three years old? One day. All right. Here's the next one. Might not look like a hibiscus to you, but it is. This is the cranberry hibiscus. Hibiscus acetosella. A-C-E-T-O-S-E-L-L-A. And I did a whole video about this plant, the cranberry hibiscus, so I'll link it in the comments. But just basically, uh, it's very cool. The whole thing is this like cranberry color, including the stems and the flowers. When they come out, they're fully all cranberry colored. It does get woody, as you can see. Here's the woody stem part. Apparently you can propagate it uh, from cuttings, but this plant uh, has done very well just dropping seeds. Here are some of the babies. We've gotten loads and loads of babies that have come up just from the flowers and the seeds all around this plant. Um, apparently you can also make a tea from it. However, I mean, I use this just like in stir fries. Stir fries, whatever. It has a really lovely tart flavor. Um, but one thing to know is if you've ever had hibiscus tea, or agua de jamaica, which is like a cool red drink. That is not from this type of hibiscus. That is from a plant called roselle, which is hibiscus sabdarifa. So just something to keep in mind. If what you're looking for is the plant that will let you have hibiscus tea and the delicious agua de jamaica that you get from those dried red hibiscuses at the Latin store, then... Uh, this is not the plant you're looking for, but this is also a very useful plant. So finally, the last kind of hibiscus that I want to show you is just a little, we have a few of these, and these are just your normal ornamental hibiscuses that come in a variety of colors. These are, uh, the species is Hibiscus rosa sinensis, and they are, they can be propagated from cuttings, and that's what's happening right here. Uh, we have some that we've we have in the ground but none of them are flowering right now so i just wanted to show you these with these you can actually in in our landscape in our environment you can actually just go ahead and stick these into the ground and they they will grow um we've had some mixed success doing it that way so i'm just trying it with water in these but really you don't it's not required let me show you a little bit of like some of the little root bits that are coming in i mean these might be even ready You can see those little white nodules there that are blurry. There you go. That's where the roots should come in. And maybe I'll go ahead and stick these in water, or sorry, in soil. I'm not really sure. To be determined, they've actually been sitting in this water for a while, and we've had a couple of flowers come from there. You know, you can, it, it's nice because you can, you know, you're visiting someone, they have a big hibiscus tree and you say to them, oh, could I just have like one tiny little cutting, one tiny little branch, and then you can get your own and develop your own collection of different colors. So that's pretty much it for all the hibiscuses that we grow around here. Here you can look at our beautiful beans. And I hope you enjoyed this video. What kind of hibiscuses do you grow are there any edible kinds i love edible foods so let me know in the comments what you think how you grow your hibiscuses oh yeah lilacoy. look at that just waiting for these lilacoy to come in waiting to eat a delicious bean all right <laughs> that's it for me now all right take care bye bye